So here's a, uh, another example of when to underclean. This is a 30 year old VCT tile that could be one of those licking sticks. Uh, I don't know if you can see, there's a shine on there, there's some wax, but they're in a position where they're, they don't want to replace it. They're going to rent it out to uh, CrossFit. So the office doesn't matter as much as the massive room that's in there. Anyhow, if I were to strip this floor, um, it'd create a lot of issues. It's crumbling apart and the wax is kind of holding it together. You got a lot of separation where the tiles have shrunk and petrified northern Nevada. So I don't want to be a deep cleaning superhero here. So I'm going to use 3M surface prep pads under my trusty 175 there. Let me show you what the surface prep pad is. And these are, are prepping the floors for lack of a better term. Surface prep pad. So it will scrub all this, holy mackerel. All this funk loose, all the buildup of gunk that's been swept under these file cabinets or shelving units or whatever for the past 30 years. It'll get all that off. It'll take a minute layer of the wax off, uh, help with some of the scratches, and get as clean as can be, but without taking all the gunk off, the wax off. And then I'll put three or four coats of the high solids, extremely shiny floor wax, finish, whatever you want to call it. And that shine will hide all the blemishes to the average human eye, which you will see by the end of this video. That this floor is in no shape to be completely stripped, and even if it was, they don't want to spend the money. They got $700 set aside to deal with this, and I figure this might take me an hour to clean, three coats, another hour and a half, half hour per coat, dry time. So, decent money, and they'll be thrilled. They won't see what I see and 2% of cleaning professionals see. So, let me get some... Uh, cleaner down, gonna use some Ultra Pack Extreme because it's so filthy. If it wasn't filthy, I would just use a neutral cleaner, but I wanna cut some of this grease that's been accumulating out here in the mechanics bay. So, gotta go a little aggressive. All right, we'll be back. All right, got it all down, flat mopped it around. Now we're hitting it with the SPP. You can see that gunk mark right there. Let's see, it takes that off. Presto Magico. Got to love rubber combing. Go right up to it. Scrub the heck out of it. No risk. Obviously, you want to rinse those when you're getting all this gunk off. Leave them clean. If you ever look closely at those, you'll see the years and years of wax build up. That's why they're always dark colored, so you can't see it. I'll hit the uh, corners either with a doodle bug or my my grout brush over there. But yeah, these uh, surface prep pads, they're a godsend. I don't know if you guys are impressed, I'm doing this all one handed. So, because I'm going to use my truck mount to extract this, I'm going to put two paint strainers in my inline filter because there is going to be a small amount of wax residue in here. And while I know my waste tank is totally empty, <clears throat> the risk is if you suck some of this into your blower, 
And you don't flush that out right away. That wax is going to dry and either you're going to have to dissect your vacuum blower or strip it, get it out, or God forbid you let it dry in there overnight, you're going to be buying a new blower. So, you've got to be really careful and mindful when you're using the carpet cleaning truck mount to remove, even partially remove, topical finishes. Dump often, double filter, and make sure that thing does not overflow. All right, well, I need to put two hands on this machine so I can heal some of these areas. But uh, we'll be back to check out the wax application. Time to rinse. About uh, four or five hundred psi. Here we go. Uh, to dry a little bit. It's cleaned up real nice. I've got that corner yet. But we're here for a 30 year old with a thick floor. Clean and dry. Now it's really looking like a 30 year old floor, wouldn't you say? It's been uh, definitely been stripped and rewaxed a few times. You can tell by the overall flatness there. But if you don't have any experience with putting finish on these floors, you'll see this is all going to pop, look beautiful. Got some staining from where the wax wore off and all the grease came in and. Messed up this absorbent floor. You can see it in there. Again, that, that's all going to kind of go away or hide to the untrained eye. This one's almost completely dry, but you can see they probably had a runner here, a little more wax there, then really got pulverized there. But remember all that crud, thick crud that's all gone? You can see where there's still plenty of wax underneath whatever that was. No need to take that off. That horrible mess has gone to the touch, but it's stained. It's cleaned up nice. So, let's put uh, coat number one down, see what it looks like. There you go, one thin coat. Looking good, looking good. Kaboom. So, if you've never put wax down, uh, Kind of hard for me. Maybe on the second coat, I'll, I'll set the camera up. Basically, you put a couple of lines of this, the uh, finish, and you figure eight, grabbing some off of the lines as you weave your way across the room. But I'll, I'll set it up on the next one. Here's a good reason to have a dive watch. You set the arrow there at the minute hand, so you don't have to keep track. When the minute hand hits 30, time to put another coat down. And you can stop holding your breath. All right, as you can see, the three lines I put virtually wall to wall. Probably almost too much product, being it's a second coat. But uh, let's see if the wide angle lets you pick up on the song and dance here enough. So be careful not to step in it, get your mop wet, work it, and I'm gonna actually. Room so small, I can actually pick up off of two lines here. And this 
Well, I knew it was fast enough, not that dry, obviously, but slow enough to keep an eye on the product that you are indeed covering the whole floor with each and every coat. And these uh, microfiber heads, they they hold quite a bit. So working my way into the corner here, and you got oh I don't know maybe maybe a minute to continue to work the finish before it starts to skin over. So you normally leave it pulled up. If you see some lint or something got in there, you can. Pick it up by hand and go over it again and get rid of your finger marks or whatever. But on the floor of this irregular, see I've gone over what I've already done. It's not an issue. There's not enough time to come by. But the floor of this irregular, you know, with all the blemishes, dings and dents, pits and pock marks. Uh, some lint or whatever, <laughs> and it never will never be noticed. It's not brand new for my hand means. So hopefully that helped. Turn it. Well, there we go. Well, that's two coats. I'm gonna do a third. Um, in case you're wondering, good old classic. As good as anything else out there, and. I work my way out this other door. But the, the owner and his wife came by. And they were super pleased. So you got a nice reflection. You can still see some of that tar staining that went through when the when the wax failed. Barely see it there. That's just a really gnarly dent there. No wax on the uh, sheet vinyl there, but um, geez, go back to the beginning of this video and you tell me how I did. So no stripper, SPP, don't have to put up that nasty stench, uh, none of the gunk in your tank, and plenty good for a floor like this, keep the price way down too. All right, well, this is Mike with Green Glides, Mikey's Board, Mikey's Fest. Keep coming back for more fun and educational videos. Over and out.